Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh in Hong Kong with a new episode of THD Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today we have the Hattinger, Brule and Care joining us to talk about their head and torso simulator. So we're looking forward to finding out about that. But without delay, let's thank the Alti Association, our sponsor. Um, we know they're going to be in Munich in May, probably the next event. So they'll be hosting a little a kiosk of uh, audio tech there with their association. So encourage people, encourage people to check that out or get involved with the organization. So without delay, let's say hello to everybody. So Simon in Japan. Good morning, Simon. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Good. Thank you. And Vince Ray, key account manager for HBK based in the Bay Area. How are you doing this afternoon, Vince? I'm doing super. Uh, thanks, David. Thanks, David, for uh, having me today. Appreciate yeah, it. No, no, great, great to have you on. And we, we met at CES as we were touring all the new tech, hiding out in the suites of the Venetian. And uh, and yeah, so we, we thought, well, hey, let's let's find out some more about uh, this head and torso simulator you guys have. So I guess uh, why don't we get right into it and uh, perhaps you can walk yeah. people through with a presentation. Sounds good. So this presentation um, is about the, the behind the design of the 5128. I, I just want to show you the, the different, uh, the journey um, and the, the, all the engineering work we've done to design this new 5128. And um, I must say it's been a, quite a great success um, worldwide. Um, a lot of companies have uh, purchased that uh, head and torso simulators. And I just want to show you all the steps we took to um, to come up with that design. Mm -hmm. All right. So before we start, I just want to give you a little a milestone uh, overview of um, uh, B and K and now HBK on the electroacoustic work. But um, you know, this company first of all is um, uh, uh, has been created eighty years ago. Um, so I, I didn't show you all the the all the products we made in uh, you know uh, but but uh, I must say the first product that Pear Brule and Vigo Care the two uh, founders of the company um, when they started that company they they worked on audio analyzer so audio was always a very big um, interest for 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 two uh, creators mm -hmm. and um, in 1991. Um, B and K released a um, an analyzer that became famous. It's called a B and K twenty twelve. It's way before my time, but um, it was a standalone analyzer. So uh, at that time there was no computers. Uh, where um, you know you know we designed the whole whole uh, analyzers with a TV, a keyboard, an operating system, and um, and this analyzer was very commonly used in the R and Ds in uh, North America and worldwide. Mm -hmm. for testing speakers, right? Later on, um, B&K uh, introduced a PC-based system called LabShop. So LabShop was created at the end of the 90s and was uh, one of the first uh, measurement system where you could do multi-thread um, things. You could have an FFT, an RTA, do time recording at the same time, right? And in 2006, we added a module for doing electroacoustics. And then... A little bit later, in uh, November 2017, this is when we introduced the BNK5128. Um, so that was a big, big milestone for us. Um, and uh, that's when we um, really reached a high frequency. Um, uh, we released this high frequency head and torso simulators. More to come on this topic, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, a month later, um, December 2017, um, uh, we introduced a, an audio interface called the 3670, which is a basically a, a fancy sound card, if you will, uh, with eight inputs, two outputs, um, and all the input have um, ICP or CCLD signal conditioning. So you can connect uh, pre-polarized microphones, or you can connect the 5128 to your sound cards. And uh, you can uh, directly connect and, and get data very easily. Mm. And finally, uh, in January 2022, uh, there was another big milestone. It was uh, about software at that time. And this is when we introduced the E engine or the electroacoustic engine, which works with the, um, the audio interface and obviously the hats and all the microphones, artificial ears, artificial mouth. And uh, this, this 
eEngine is a very unique application where um, it's designed as a toolbox. So it has no graphical user interface, but it's designed for programmers. Uh, so if you know a little bit of Python or MATLAB or Visual Studio, you can create your own, own application and just interact with the engine, you know, getting a frequency response measurement, for example, or getting a THD rub and buzz. Um, and that that can be done fairly, fairly easy, right? So those, this is kind of the, uh, a, a little walk through in this, in this journey here, but today mm -hmm. we're going to talk more about the hats, the 5128 hats. So when uh, my colleague at the factory um, um, designed the, an artificial ears, um, they started, um, you know, by, you know, obviously um, working on the pinna, right? And the pinna has been around, the, the standard BNK pinna has been around for many, many years. And it's quite an important uh, part here because, uh, especially for an open ear application, uh, the pinna will, um, you know, will um, create those HRTF, those head-related transfunctions. So depending where the source is located, the pinna will shape the, the the response of the source. This is a very important element um, in the the design of an artificial ear. The second part is the ear canal, and the um, you know this this ear canal has. Um, um, you know, special resonances at special frequencies, and um, you know it's it's quite important also to have the, the 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 canal shape and the damping right for having a good artificial ear. The third part, um, my colleague at the factory called it the the preamp, the preamplifier, but mm -hmm. it's basically all those uh, eardrums. Um, this eardrum, um, which has a, uh, you know, um, a different, um, uh, you know, little bones connected there. So this is quite important, um, to have, um, the eardrum, uh, model correctly in the artificial ear. And finally, the last part, the cochlear part is, um, not a model in the artificial ears, but it's model in the software. And this is where we do a psychoacoustic analysis or sound quality analysis where we do all the frequency masking, time masking, calculate uh, time varying loudness. So this is this is a software part, right? All right, so back back in time here, um, uh, the B and K uh, before the 5128 had a head and torso simulators called the 41, um, you know, 4127. Um, and it was launched in 1987. Um, you know, uh, quite some time. And um, this hats, um, 4128, I'm sorry, I'm correcting the, the part, mm -hmm. part number here. And the, this hats um, was not the first hats on the market, I must say, but that was the first hat that has a built-in artificial mouth. And it was very commonly used by the telecom industry for testing telephones. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, this hats was a, uh, used a 711 coupler that was designed by uh, Per Bruel himself, and uh, you know, and again, it be became a, a, a good standard in the industry. So a lot of people were using it, and a lot of people were using it above its specification. Right, as you may know, uh, the 711 has some restriction in terms of acoustic impedance. So it, it is really designed to um, measure correctly, like a human being, up to 10 kilohertz. And above 10 kilohertz, the 711 has uh, all kind of nasty resonances, which are not human-like. Um, and you know, for many, many years, uh, engineers, and I include myself here, were measuring headphones, right, or telephones, um, way above 10 kilohertz, way above the, the limit, uh, the specification of the, of the 711. But at that time, you know, that, that was the only head and torso simulators uh, we had. And, um, you know, so all the measurements we've collected were probably wrong. Um, but, you know, at least we, we, we got something. Yeah, so clearly, there's, yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of folklore about the 7-Eleven coupler in terms yeah. of uh, one of the rumors I heard is that it was done rather quickly with a <laughs> small sample size. But I'm sure there's a million yeah. stories like this. Oh yeah, yeah, and 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 you know the when they invented that the the back the factory in Denmark, I mean it's it was like a, it was a long time ago, you know, and people mm -hmm. who were working on that or may not be at the factory anymore, right? So it's it's hard to get the the true story there, but you know they they did a human study, um, mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, and um, obviously, you know, they didn't use a lot of people, but, but it was better than nothing. Right. And, um, you know, so yeah, um, more, more, more to say about it and, and you'll, you'll see what, what we've done with the 5128. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So as I mentioned, you know, uh, there's a little big warning sign here, uh, 7-Elevens, um, you know, you can certainly, um, use them up to eight kilohertz, or even you can push it to 10 kilohertz, but, you know, be aware that above 10 K you're going to measure some funny thing. Um, and, um, and, um, you know, you will probably overestimate your sound pressure level, uh, above 10 kilohertz. And there's also some side effect on the medium frequency and the, and the low frequencies where we'll discuss uh, real quick here. All right. So, um, how do we start, um, by redesigning the 4128 and redesigning this, uh, new ear? Well, we, as, uh, as we discuss here, uh, we did a human study in, and that was done in two phases. Um, the first phase was to select a group of people at the BNK factory. About uh, 44 people were selected, 22 male, 22 female. And the first thing we did was uh, we, we sent them to the Copenhagen hospital where we did a 3D MRI scan of their ear canal and entrance of the ear canal. It was not just the ear canal, also the entrance was captured. And at that time, that was the best technology. And I think it's still tr true today, um, most accurate, and we could really fully capture everything we wanted, right? And so that was the first, first phase. And the second phase was to uh, measure uh, people, the acoustic impedance of all the subjects uh, that have been selected. So um, you can imagine, um, you know, you may think that 44 people is not a big group, but it took us a lot of work to, to go through the whole process and, and, you know, and, and to measure everyone. And, um, and it was uh, more complicated than, one, than we thought actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of one, of my colleague. Um, um, it's actually, you've got two pictures here. Um, and um, so it's the same person. Um, the picture on the right, uh, it's, um, the picture is zoomed in here, here a little bit and you can see the ear canal shape fairly well. And that's because we use the, um, little oil or they call it the contrast, contrast agent, mm -hmm. which reveal the, you know, the, the shape of the ear canal. Uh, so you could see it's, you know, the, 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 the ear canal is not a straight tube, um, like you can find on a 7-Eleven or on a 4128 hats, it's a little more convoluted than that. And sometimes, you know, between the left ear and the right ear, the ear canal shape are really different. So we had a good collection here, a lot of samples. Um, and, um, you know, we, we did, a, did some work on the, trying to average everything. So here, here's a picture um, um, of uh, one ear canal that you can get outside of the MRI scan scanner. Uh, so the you can see here it's the uh, eardrum, and on you know, the other side that's the um, entrance of the ear canal. So you know we uh, we had those three D images, um, very accurate images that um, we were able to use uh, for for creating the new uh, uh, ear of the fifty one twenty eight. Mm. So. The first challenge here is uh, on an ear canal because the ear canal have different sizes. You know, um, the first challenge was to define a, a reference plane um, on all the ear canals we collected or measured, and uh, we decided to have a little plug um, that was designed to be uh, to to terminate at 19 millimeters inside the ear canals between the two bands, right? And we did that because we wanted to make sure that we could, uh, when we were measuring the impedance, you know, all the impedance will be uh, in reference to that reference plane. And uh, so it took took us some time to develop those uh, custom um, custom earplug for all the, the subjects. But you know, I think that was a very good decision. And you can see also those earplugs were um, penetrated by two holes there, and uh, you'll see why in, in uh, the next slide here. But um, so, you know, those earplugs were fairly easy uh, to mount, you know, but, you know, when you, um, and, you know, they will fit the ear canal of all the subjects very well. 
but you know when you collect data real data there's always some 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 issues and you know and and, and uh, so it's always it's always a challenge to collect uh, real data on on people especially right mm -hmm. but here's the instrumentation we use um for measuring the uh transfer impedance on 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 uh, individuals we use a bnk4182 uh, this is a microphone a pro microphone as we call it so it's a microphone with a it's a standard condenser microphones which is terminated by a little silicon tube here and um and um you know um on the top of the silicon tube you've got the custom uh earplug basically so you could uh, insert that earplug in the ear canal and the earplug again was designed to be really at 90 millimeters from the drum from the eardrum on the picture also, I like that picture because we show some um, some of the cavities, reference cavities we have also, which have a well-known volume and a well-known um, impedance. So you can calibrate the uh, measurement system with those those little cavities here on the you see on the picture. So that was that was it. Um, so here's the picture of my colleague here. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm going to pass him some of the details, but um, you can imagine that. Um, if you don't take care of the probe and you start to bend those little silicon tubes there, you know, the measurement uh, will be very inconsistent. And that's, I think, you know, we, we ask uh, the people to come back multiple times to, to be remeasured and to have very consistent data. And I think it, they, they, uh, my colleagues understood after uh, well, at least uh, the second round that how to mount those earplugs correctly and, um, you know, to have some consistent data. But you know, this is a um, yeah. This is was this was a long process, as you can imagine. Yeah. All right. So at the end of the session, there uh, we're able to um, take all those transfer impedances um, and average them. So you can see that uh, when the uh, ear plug are positioned at the right location inside the ear canal at 19 millimeters, you know you've got the peaks, um, the half wave resonance peak inside the ear canal. They all align pretty well on all the subjects. And, um, and then we're able to average all those transfer impedances to get an you know, average uh, target uh, reference value there. So this is, this is, um, this is uh, the, the black line here is uh, our normalized average, which, um, which we use uh, to design the 5128. So here's, um, here's a picture of... Um, of um, you know um, uh, an ear canal from um, one of the um, uh, uh, samples we collected, and and you got also the average ear canal. So while while we were collecting data on people, there was another team at BNK that uh, started to work and average all those three D MRI scans. Um, so. It took us some time to go through the whole process, and um, again, I'm going to um, skip some of the details here. But, but uh, the goal here was to really have um, an average ear canal, and and um, you know, and um, and it turns out that after all the averaging we've done, the, we came up with that uh, ear canal design here, which has two bands. It's a two bands ear canal. And I must say, sometimes there's questions about are the left ear and the right ear are uh, do they use kind of the same ear canal? And the answer is yes. You know, they're they're mirrored. You know, so the left ear and the right ear are are completely mirrored. So you can test headphones. You know, and mm -hmm. um, and that's that's um, that's you know that's that's what we have in the new uh, fifty one twenty eight. All right, so. The next thing here, um, you know, we had collected some human study. Uh, we did a, 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 um, you know, collected the, um, the transfer impedance. We measured the, uh, 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 you know, the ear canal shape. The the next step was to design a simulator, um, uh, ear simulator, right? And we started to work on a new microphones. Um, so that's something uh, BNK uh, has a lot of know-how, obviously, and we decided to go with a quarter-inch microphones because a quarter-inch microphone is the size of an eardrum, more or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, you know, the quarter-inch microphone is right there, and we went with a, uh, a preamplifier, which is a half-inch preamp, 
Um, it's a low noise preamp. And so that was the first part. Uh, the second part here is the eardrum, you know, um, and I, I think I'm going to share a picture um, in a few slides that shows the um, inside of the ear, uh, the, the eardrum. But obviously the microphones and the eardrum all connect together, right? And, and then uh, the next and third part is the ear canal, the two band ear canal and the, and the pinna, right? The external pinna. So, and the, the, you know, I just want to mention one thing, uh, the BNK customers who owns a 4128, you know, were always um, um, uh, had questions about the, the silicone um, we use in the, um, in the, in the pinna. Well, on the 5128, we use a, a very, um, a very similar silicone, except this one can be stretched now. So you can really stretch it and it's very resilient, right? I, I like to show that because sometimes, you know, if you want to test a, a position an earbud and really seal it properly, I highly recommend on the 5128 to stretch the pinna, insert the earbud, the earbud there, and release it. You know, more or less what the, the, the same thing you would do with your own with your own pinna if you want to seal it properly, right? Mm -hmm. So the silicone here is, I, has changed quite a bit, and there's um, a lot of um, um, secret recipe to make it to make it that that resilient, you know. And um, so in terms of, of materials, there there's uh, two type of materials inside the uh, ear canal. There is a soft uh, silicone, um, which is at the entrance of the ear canal. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of the ear canal, we have um, a hard plastic. And the hard plastic basically was very important because that simulate the bony structure of the ear canal. And that, um, Hard plastic really helps to achieve the the transfer impedance, uh, the target transfer impedance uh, we measured on people. So it was it was this this part is uh, fairly complex to make, uh, I must say. But mm -hmm. uh, the most the most complicated one is certainly the eardrum, and I've got a picture here um, that shows okay. uh, an eardrum. I, I don't think I never show that picture in public, okay. so that's the first that's... time we are doing it. So let, let's have a look on the uh, eardrum part, um, which is uh, basically the, the middle section here. And, and I put a picture that um, shows, you know, um, the, 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 the microphone membrane. You can see it's an open diaphragm. There's no protection grid on this microphone. And, um, you know, you can see also on the picture uh, four different, uh, four little small slits there. Mm -hmm. I hope you can see it well. And um, so this, this eardrum is a four branch, um, uh, four branch coupler, four branch, uh, yeah, coupler. And the uh, 711 was a two branch coupler. So we needed a little more branches to, in order to uh, fit the target impedance we measured on people. So it's a little more complicated to make, I must say, than a 711 coupler. And, um, but uh, the, the big thing also is this open diaphragm and, and, and basically, you know, in few words, when you have a, um, uh, this open diaphragm, the four slits, we can certainly curve fit everything, the curve fit, the target impedance and the uh, precision um, um, that you have, be, you know, between all the ears we can make is very, very good, very high. And so, you know, this is probably the one of the best comment I had from uh, my customers. One day I, I asked uh, one of the customers um, in Washington area, actually, and asked him, what, what, do you like our, the way we tune the, uh, the eardrum? And the answer was, yeah, we like it, but what, what, we are still buying your hats because your hats are very consistent, very precise. So we can buy one, five, 10, and uh, they all measure the same. And, um, you know, if, if uh, I must say the team did a very good, uh, good work on the engineering side of, of, um, of, of, uh, of this uh, artificial ears and the precision um, is, is quite remarkable, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so this is, this is it. Um, um, this is the ears that um, uh, we use in the 5128 and, um, and the standalone ears we call it the 4620. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes I refer to the 4620, sometimes I refer to the 5128. 5128 is the full head and torso simulators. Mm -hmm. uh, the 4620 is just the, the ear part. 
but you know the the way it's designed it's you can disconnect the eardrum from uh the ear canal and the pinna right so you can do a, a physical calibration using a uh, 4231 an acoustic calibrator uh, there's a little adapter uh, called the di 0658 um, and when you connect the drum to the adapter and you fit it in the side of the 4231, the reference level is not 94 dB, but 95.2 dB. I like to, um, to repeat that. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when you calibrate microphones, free field microphones or diffuse field microphones, uh, you know, typically we use 94 dB. Sometimes, you know, you can go, uh, you know, um, you can, you can go uh, up to... Uh, 140, 114 dB with that calibrator, but mm -hmm. you know when you um, when you use the 4231 with that adapter, it's 95.2 dB. And so you can do a physical calibration of the of the microphone fairly easily, like you would do um, you know with a standard loan mic. You know, so it's the same same thing. To remove the ear, there is a little uh, mechanical uh, button here you have on the neck. So you push the mm -hmm. button on the neck, and you can pull out the ear. It's mm -hmm. quite easy to do. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, while, while the team was still working on the R&D, um, um, you know, they, um, they had to validate their, their prototype. And um, so basically what they've done is they, they took a full artificial ears and um, defined a, um, uh, they made the custom ear plug like we've done for people. And you can see the earplug terminated by the two silicon tubes there. And they kind of remeasure the whole thing, um, you know, um, and uh, you can see, you know, the simulation versus the real, real measurement here. And, um, and uh, you can see that uh, we reached the, um, the, the target where within the tolerance we're mm -hmm. expecting for the simulation, right? That's another uh, slide I, I rarely show. I, I may not have shown that publicly, but I think it's a very good one. And I, I just want to explain that a little bit because there's a lot, lot to cover here. Um, what you have here is a transfer impedance in dB over Hertz, over frequency, okay? Function of frequency. And we're comparing a 7-Eleven tra uh, response, a transfer impedance response, right? Transfer impedance with the high frequency ears from the 5128, also called the 4620, right? And, and this, those two curves um, are, um, are, have been made here such a way that um, we were using the same reference plane, right? On the 711, the, the reference prints is a little different from the 5128. And, and obviously, if you don't have the same inception depth here, right, um, um, the peaks, the half wave resonance you have here will not align. So you cannot really compare uh, a, a 711 and, and a 5128 because, because the reference planes are different. So one of my colleague there, a good, guy, good colleague at the factory, um, um, did a simulation work and uh, basically um, um, used a... Um, a, um, a 7-Eleven coupler and a 4620 and using exactly the same reference plane. And, and now we can really truly understand and, and try to um, you know, explain the differences between the two, the two responses. So our goal was to really work on the high frequency, especially um, you know, um, what's, what's happening uh, around the half-wave resonance. And you can see that the red curve here um, which is the 7-Eleven coupler has a um, high peak in terms of transfer impedance for the half wave. And the 4620 is damped, you know, same peak, same frequency, obviously, but different amplitude, right? And so what's happening here, it's, it's basically it tells us that the, on a 7-Eleven, when the, um, you know, when you're um, uh, around the half wave resonance, you're going to have a very high transfer impedance and you're gonna overestimate the sound pressure level you measure with your headphones or your, with your earbuds, right? So there's going to overestimate of the sound pressure level here. And um, so when we saw that result, I mean, we're pretty confident that we're on the good track here. But what was surprising is that on the medium frequencies, there were some differences. 
And also on the low frequencies, there were some differences between the two cup couplers, and we were not uh, expecting that at all. Uh, so Vince, can I just ask quickly, what's the scale on the y-axis? Yeah, it's in dB scale here. Uh, it's, it's what's, what, what's the gaps? Is it 10 dB per division? It's a 10 dB One, gap. 10, it's a 10 okay, dB okay. gap. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not gap. showing up here on my screen here. It's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a 10 dB gap. And then what's also sometimes a little funny here, uh, or you know, it's it's we divide the the, the amplitude by uh, the frequencies, so the, the, the curves are are tilted like this, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so higher is the frequency, and and lower is your amplitude, basically, right? But at least um, you know we can compare the two curves here, and um, and you know it's it's a relative comparison anyway, so it's it, it doesn't really matter if you divide by hertz or not, right? Okay. But look at what what's happening in the low frequencies too. Um, uh, the 711 is a pretty straight line here, right? And uh, the 4620 or 5128 uh, rolls off a little bit in the low frequencies. And um, we we know we we saw that in our human study when we collected uh, the the transfer impedance on people. You could clearly visualize it, you know, after uh, with with the you know samples we had, you know, clearly there was a roll off. So the ear simulator on the 5128 translate that pretty well. But again, what's what's happening is the we believe that the 711 coupler in the lower frequency overestimate the sound pressure level. And um, you know, for, for many years we we you know collected certainly you know measurements that were overestimated compared to to um, um, an average human being. Mm. And same thing in the in the medium frequencies, you know, there's some differences, you know. Um, so only, all in all, I mean, it's you know clearly there's a big improvement. I would say in the higher frequencies, that's for sure with the fifty-one twenty-eight. Um, but I believe there's some uh, improvement also in the lower frequencies. This is where you know we um, this is the kind of a big selling factor for headphone manufacturers, right? I mean, can your headphones deliver bass? You know, and 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 so this this is a quite important um, uh, design moves here from from uh, B and K there. To to make it uh, you know um, and I believe we have we have a right right tuning for this um, according to our human study at least yeah mm. yeah so oh I have also someone um, uh, a customer sent me uh, some measurements sound pressure measurement this time it's not uh, transfer impedance. Um, and the measurements were really textbooks you know um, I think it was a hearing aid. A test and um, he did a he took the same hearing aid and measure it um, on a 5128 and on a 4128. So 5128 again is the high frequency coupler and the 4128 is 711 coupler. And you can see it's the same hearing aid, same condition, right? And you can see you can see the differences, right? You can see that the uh, the half wave resonance there's a big difference between the two here. Um, and clearly, the 711 high, uh, has a high high sound pressure level compared to the 5128. Some of the differences in the medium frequencies, but also in the low frequencies, you can see that the the 5128 rolls off, um, you know, compared to 711. So I thought it was it was a good measurement, um, you know, and um, and um, you know, this is what to expect, I guess. Um, uh, comparing uh, comparing the same same headphones, you know, on the on the two on the two different hats, two different uh, yeah, two different hats. The thing is, you know, it is very it's impossible to to really um, have a, a transformation. Let's say if you own a seven eleven coupler, you know, the forty one twenty eight, for example, it will be very difficult to come up with a transformation to you know. Uh, estimate what results you will get on the 5128, because um, you know if if you take uh, maybe on a given device, you know on a given hearing aid, you may you may have the same transformation, but you know that transformation may not be true for a, he a headphone over the ears or earbuds, mm -hmm. you know, and and obviously those the devices you're testing, you know, are in this acoustic environment, acoustic you know impedance environment, let's say, and they have to interact with it, right? So it's not just the transformation of the ear; it's also how the the device you're testing is adjusting to that to that environment. 
So it's a very complex and, and there's, unfortunately, there's no easy solution to, to transform a 7-Eleven into a high frequency response. Mm. It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, it took uh, you know um, some times to um, also to to we went through this uh, uh, ITUT uh, certification, uh, this telecom uh, standard. Mm -hmm. um, BNK is, uh, has been uh, 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 is a member of the ITUT, and uh, it took us almost four years, I think, when we released the fifty one twenty eight and to go through all those certification process. But wow. now the the, the fifty one twenty eight is um, is um, part of the standard of the P fifty seven standard and the P fifty eight standard, which are free. You can download that from the from uh, from the ITU website. Uh, I recommend doing that because there's a lot of details um, and a lot of interesting information about it. And they have also a collection of all the previous years, right? Uh, the seven eleven on a forty one twenty eight was called a three point three. But there's the type two and even older older artificial ears are available in that standard. So very, very interesting document to read. Um, so you know, officially now you can you can do measurements um, 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 with the 5128s uh, and you can measure telephones, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as you can see on the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so so um, the the way the structure of the product is, you know, there's there's basically four categories. Um, you know, there there's a fifty one twenty eight D that that's the same picture as as the previous slide here. That's our telecom solution, and mm -hmm. uh, basically it's a it's a standard fifty one fifty one uh, hats, but it has this fancy um, cell phone positioner called the forty six oh six. You know. And this is a positioner that helps you to apply a certain force to the pinna. You the 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 holder grabs the phone with we call it fingers. It's not really fingers, but it's you know it's called like that. And you can position the phone, um, you know, and rotate the phone. There's a lot of ways to to adjust mm -hmm. the position of the phone. And this is a very transparent design too, right? So if you have the microphone at the back, you know. To that microphones that can collect background uh, background noise, uh, they're not blocked by by that design. Right. Mm -hmm. Fifty one twenty eight C is probably the most commonly sold in North America and worldwide. That's the full head and torso simulators. Uh, it comes with two ears, a mouth, and um, it comes also as an option. You can buy this UA twenty one eighty, which is a little pedestal. That you can use to mount the head on this uh, on this little device, mm -hmm. and so we have this third ca category, which was extremely popular during the COVID time, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because people were working from home, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, you know it was uh, like like I have here on yeah. my desk, it was uh, <laughs> you know, uh, table tabletop uh, hats as we call it. Yeah. And for testing headphones, earbuds, you know, uh, smart glasses, you know, that was that was a perfect unit here. You didn't need the torso, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have the forty six twenty, which is the um, the standalone uh, artificial ears um, we discuss um, today, and some spare part also. You can you can buy some pin on the ear canal without the drum. Yeah. Okay. So that that's 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 all we have. Um, um, okay. Do you have any any questions for me? Uh, I wouldn't yeah. mind uh, uh, this process of um, measuring a lot of people and coming up with the target uh, transfer impedance. Yep. <clears throat> uh, then, you, then you say essentially what you do is you try and measure as many people as possible and and take an average. Is it true to say not exactly an average, perhaps more of a median, because you wouldn't want that's to? Correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's the statistically correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, but on top of that, is that then uh, you would calculate this median, but then you actually want to kind of, let's say, smooth it or idealize it slightly so that it is uh, formulated kind of uh, as a mathematical function. Yeah. Than... Yeah. It, it, yeah that, 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 there's a lot to cover here, a lot, a lot to say, yeah. but um, I, I just want to share, share one thing, which is public information there. It's a, uh, during when we measured uh, um, uh, the people there, obviously with those um, custom-made earplug, 
uh, just to put the earplug inside the ear canal, you know, uh, even though the ear, the earplug was designed to be at 90 millimeters from the drum, when you insert them in the ear canal, you know, somewhere at 18 millimeters, somewhere at 17, sometimes uh, they were at 20 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And so they had to um, take data that way and mathematically mm -hmm. correct for the positioning mm -hmm. of, of the, you know, of the reference plane. And so there, there's a lot of math involved there. And that's why it probably took four years to go through that certification of the ITU because they wanted to, to um, um, uh, understand how we did, how we, you know, took the, 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 the mean value uh, and how we corrected for all those variables, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, thanks. Thanks, Simon, for the question. It's, um, that's, yeah, I guess that'll be a presentation ITU. on its own. Yeah, the ITU, yeah, yeah. it's not it's not like literally just uh, passing a test. It's like you're creating a standard. So they really need to understand the fundamentals of what you're proposing before oh, they approve it. So I can absolutely. I was thinking like, wow, that's a lot worse than FDA approval, but it's a lot perhaps more complex because <laughs> you're not just passing like uh, skin toxicity tests or whatever you might be trying to get approved FDA. Uh, it's yeah. interesting, interesting uh, uh, in in the beginning, through. you mentioned that um, uh, BNK developed the uh, seven one one coupler, and they did so independently of anybody else. But later, that became uh, the international standard, and the uh, design was published. And you say anyone, you can now go and build that. Uh, yeah, is it likely to have a similar thing for this design? That, that's correct. I mean, it was it was done in, internally. Right, seven uh, eleven was was if I'm not mistaken, there was. Um, they started to work on it in the early eighties, maybe late seventies. Um, and, um, and, um, there, there, it was not the first artificial ear that was on, on the market at that time, but Pear Brule, um, when he, you know, what, what the, the, the added value of Pear was really to make it a super robust, you know, and, um, and so, so yeah, that was a, a work that was done internally at, at BNK. Yeah, yeah. Same, um, same for uh, the fifty one. Same for the fifty one twenty. Would this would this new design become uh, public? Uh, put in the public domain as the uh, reference, a new standard that others can follow. Mm. So to some extent, the seven one one standard is saying here's the uh, required uh, impedance acoustic impedance. If you build it matching this acoustic impedance, you've fulfilled the seven one one standard requirements. Uh, exactly. Would the same thing happen for this design. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So it's it's um it's a good thing and it's a bad thing to to um, to be in the in the in the standard, right? It's it's a good thing because. Customers understand and comply with that standard, so everyone mm -hmm. can do the same measurement. But also, you're exposing yourself to competition. People who can copy your design, mm -hmm. and uh, I must say that sure, what... BNK does all the heavy lifting, does all the costly work of development, and, and uh, yeah. say, oh, thank you very much. This is the new uh, yeah, good. yeah. But but I think a lot of customers also realize what what we did and what the contribution we had, and um, you know, uh, so. Um, but you know, this BNK has always been, uh, HBK now has always been very pro, pro, uh, standard, you know, yeah. Yeah. um, and we're not, um, you know, we're, we're really, um, we're trying to, to have customers making better measurement, you know, um, more accurate, more precise measurements. And, um, and that our, our philosophy is to go through standards to explain what, what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. One more thing uh, in uh, maybe the first or second slide, uh, you mentioned that uh, the design includes the pinna, air canal, the air drum, and then a software component. Yep. Uh, uh, we didn't get to that. Is there anything? No. That? No. Is that essentially to try and take that measurement and then apply a uh, correction for uh, hearing perception? Yeah, yeah, and I, and that made me worth it a, a a second interview, if you will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but um, you know, there, there's a lot to say about uh, you know traditional you know uh, metrics we're using. Typically, you know, I, I can I can um, talk quickly about THD, right? Total harmonic distortion, right? So if if you take a an art show like this, and you know, um, and you take THD like we've done for many many decades, right? You will get some numbers, but are those numbers 
correlate with subjective impression, mm -hmm. right? And and I know the answer to that. It, it, the answer is no. <laughs> so so it doesn't doesn't mean that all the measurements we we've, we've done with THD are wrong. Um, they 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 are not necessarily correlating very well with how we perceive distortion, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where where the psychoacoustics and the software can really help here because we have model to to take that into consideration. Take for example frequency masking into consideration while when you have two two frequencies that are close to each other, like in the harmonic distortion type, you know, um, one harmonic can mask the other, right? And and if you don't, you know, model that correctly, um, you may overestimate or uh, yeah overestimate uh, the, the 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 total harmonic distortion and I, we can prove that you know you can have up to 8% distortion uh, measuring a product and when you listen to it you don't hear anything mm. you know so it's it's more than a physical measurement you know physical measurement you know like THD are I'm not saying there it's bad it's not it doesn't necessarily correlate well with the sound quality aspect of things. Yeah. And, you know, we developed a new uh, new metric called BSR, Buzz, Quick and Rattle, which is a fairly sophisticated um, 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 nonlinear uh, metric, or it's a, it's a metric that measures nonlinearities in a product. And um, we use, you know, um, um, time varying loudness um, the 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 loudness that take into account time and frequency masking, and you can you can, you know, this is a very robust uh, robust metric um, for measuring nonlinearities, and for the first time, and I, I use that metric for now a year. You know, I got I got the prototype very early, and I play with it quite a bit, and um, but it's it's quite a, a, it's a game changer because now my when I measure distortion. Uh, you know, on a speaker, for example, that I can, I can, you know, I, I can listen to it, obviously, and I can say, oh, I know what kind of uh, BSR I'm going to get on that product, or you mm -hmm. know, I can, I can correlate my subjective impression with the numbers now, which mm -hmm. we couldn't do before. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So that's that's worth it. Another another talk here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, speaking of which. Uh... Yeah, so so thanks, Vince, for uh, introducing this fifty one twenty eight. I think a lot of people are are looking at it. We hear about it quite a bit. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, we encourage everybody like, subscribe, share this, and uh, I guess we'll see everybody on the next episode. Thanks, everybody.